Hi everyone, Mrs. Wants here. Today we are going to talk about combining sentences and punctuation. So this is going to go very fast. If you want, feel free to pause the video at any time or rewind and watch in order to understand everything. So we have been learning about nine different elements of writing as a foundation. Simple sentences, compound sentences, complex sentences, and compound complex sentences along with punctuation marks, colons, semicolons, quotations, commas, and apostrophes. So now what? How do you put it all together? Well, you experiment, play, throw stuff out, start again, bend the rules to suit yourself. Writing is a craft. It's something that you make. So how you write depends on your purpose and on the techniques that you know and practice. As a writer, you choose words and sentence structures that become paragraphs to create effects in other people. There are models to learn from, but there's no recipe. Writing has structure, but it's not a dot to dot. Writing is creative, but it's not a paint by number. Writing is like making a cup for someone from a wet lump of clay on a spinning wheel with your own shaky hands. In the beginning, it's very difficult to make a cup. But with practice, it gets easier and it gets better, even fun or something you love. Building your technique takes time and guidance from your teachers. So let's use our four sentence types and our five punctuation marks to start a story. I'll weave all of them into a story that fits on a single slide. Let's call this story Orange Bird's Secret. The two girls who raised peacocks had learned a secret. School was taking place online now, so every day from their kitchen window, the sisters watched Orange Bird working in his garage. Although they knew they shouldn't spy, they weren't allowed much extra screen time. So out of boredom, the girls observed their bug-eyed neighbor putter around with his tools. They constantly whispered to each other about what he might be doing. Whisper, 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 until their green-haired mother chided them for being so curious. It was Tuesday morning when they saw Orange Bird bring out two suitcases. He stuffed the following into the largest one. Three bags of flaming hot Cheetos, two water guns, and a six-pack of yo-yos. Then he stretched and took a black crate down from the highest shelf. Inside was something so odd, it caused the girls to gasp and talk in unison. What? The girls shrieked. How? They stared as Orange Bird set something down nobody had ever seen or imagined in the history of Earth. It was Centipede Game Boy Dog a four-legged yellow console with a center screen that was now running in circles, barking, beeping, and begging. After a minute, Orange Bird popped out the battery and shoved the lifeless robot creature into the small suitcase. I'm moving to Texas, he shouted to nobody. The girls didn't believe Orange Bird. They jumped up to go outside to ask where he was really going. But just then, their meanest peacock, Bob, flew over the fence and on to Orange Bird's bald head, where it fanned its tail feathers and screamed for a peahen. This caused Orange Bird to drop the suitcase, which cracked open enough for Centipede Game Boy Dog to scuffle into the bushes and disappear from sight. Apparently, it didn't need a battery. And here's a shout out to Sebastian B. from Real Real School for illustrating the centipede Game Boy dog. So this is the beginning of a narrative writing piece. Its form and my technique give readers a story and cause effects. Some of those effects might be, what will happen next? Which shows curiosity. How could a bird hold suitcases? Which shows skepticism. The girls were likely going to chase after centipede Game Boy dog. That shows an inference. I crafted this writing by starting with one not so good sentence and adding to it line by line. Then I revised and revised and revised. 
So what can we notice about the sentences and punctuation I chose? Is there a pattern? Let's make my choices visible. So here you can see that I have put all the simple sentences in pink. And you can see that they are pretty much almost in every single paragraph. But there's no pattern. It's not like I chose, oh, the first sentence of every paragraph should be a simple sentence, or the last sentence, or the middle sentence, or there should be two in every paragraph. So you can't see a pattern because there is none. The compound sentences, I only used one. I just put it up at the top, it sounded good there, and I left it at that. The complex sentences, I used quite a few more, and mostly towards the end of the story. No pattern there. And finally, the compound complex, the most difficult of all, I only used one. That makes a lot of sense. I'm not going to use those too often, but where I placed it, obviously no pattern. Let's look at the punctuation. Colons, I used one sentence with colons. You can see that I made a list. For semicolons, you can see that I put two sentences together. Quotation marks. I used two quotation marks for showing uh, the dialogue, and I used a, a pair of quotation marks to show sarcasm. The mom isn't really saying that the girls were curious when she said that word. She was sort of implying that they were being nosy. With commas, I sprinkled them throughout. And finally, apostrophes. I used one, uh, Flaming Hot Cheetos, the G is missing, and that is the brand name, and that's how they spell it. I put a contraction in there. We don't really talk, we don't really say I am, we say I'm when we're talking, so I, that sounds more authentic for dialogue. And finally, orange bird's bald head showing possession. And here they are all together in one place. So you can see that there is no pattern. There's no like every two sentences is pink or every two is blue or every two is green. You can't follow a pattern. There's no dots, there's no numbers, there's no formula, there's no recipe, uh, there's no fill in the blanks. And that's not how you learn to write. What we have are structures, ideas, and exploration. That's how you learn to write. There are other types of writing besides narratives. We have descriptive, expository, and persuasive, and there's even more. These are the academic forms for school and college and practical life. These forms show that you've learned how to reason, which means you've learned how to think. That's what humans do. And because you are unique, so is your writing journey. So that's it, we're done. If you wanna send us a story that uses all four sentence types and the five punctuation marks that we've covered in lessons one through 10, we would love to read it. You can email it to me at mwants at realschools.org. Until then, good job, says Scout at the end, and we will see you next time.